What's up guys? Now, a lot of you guys have been coming at me with questions regarding histograms. Histograms. <laughs> and it's gotten to the point where I'm like, okay, you know what, I have to uh, make a video about histograms and this video is going to be uh, a bit longer, I suppose, than what you guys would expect because I really want to nail this subject um, and understand how you can use histograms. Um, before I begin, we need to understand one important thing, or well, maybe a couple of things, and that is one, histograms measure count or frequency. So how frequently or how what is the count that something occurs within a data set. Um, the second thing that we need to know is that things need to be in bins, and the third thing that we need to know for graph's sake is that the uh, columns need to be touching, okay? They need to be touching. If not, it's a, uh, a bar graph, all right? Um, so I've got data here, and I've got sports, soccer, and rugby, and I've also got muscle size. So, uh, you know, how big are the muscles of these sports players, all right? Um, and I'm going to make a histogram. So the easiest way that we can do that through the pivot table um, is using the pivot table. So I'm going to click into pivot table, insert pivot table on top left hand side. Um, it's already selected my data for me. It's going to go into um, a new worksheet. I actually want it to go onto my existing worksheet. So existing worksheet, click um, the location and it appears for me. Okay, so now we're doing the normal drag and drop. So I'm dragging muscle size into um, the rows and into the values as well. So here we have a uh, well, I'm just going to call it a frequency table. Um, right now it's saying the sum of the muscles, so I want to change that to the count. That way I know the frequency or the count um, that something has occurred within the data sample. Um, and here we go, we've got it. The next thing that we need to do, as I said, is we need to have bins or we need to have groups. Now the easiest way to do that is to just click onto um, your rows labels and then in Analyze, in the Analyze tab, you've got group selection. It's about midway through on the left-hand side, so group selection. It will come up with this um, box, and it goes starting at, ending at, and um, by how much is this, by how much is the size? How big do you want your bins to be? So I'm gonna start at 40, um, just for even numbers sake, and end at 90. So that'll be the range of my graph, and I'm gonna do it in lots of five. So my bin size is gonna be five. If I hit okay, it reduces the table and it also calculates the frequency that things have occurred. Okay, so next thing that I wanna do is um, actually create the histogram, create the histogram. Easy, I just stay in the analyze tab and go pivot chart. Alternatively, I can go insert um, pivot chart or um, I believe bar chart here. It's gonna go pivot chart. I'm going to use a clustered column graph, clustered column graph, okay? So that's my graph. It's gonna blow that up. And to make this a histogram, as I said, what you need to do to finalize it is um, for, right click format data series and change the gap width to 0%, okay? Um, once I've done that, that's my histogram. I can add um, lines to it. So I go to um, the little paint bucket on my format chart area panel on the right. Um, click the paint can, go border, go um, solid line, and then, oh, I gotta click onto my actual series. Um, so click onto the series, solid line. Um, I want it to be black, which it already is, uh, and I want it a bit thicker, 0.125. There we go, that's my uh, histogram done. You can obviously add in your axes, titles, your data labels, whatever you want. Um, but yeah, that's that's it. Um, now with that, there's not much that I can talk about whatsoever. There really isn't that much that I can talk about. I can see, um, you know, the count or the frequency of what's happened, um, but it really doesn't tell me that much. So if I wanted to add in another dimension or another variable to this so that I could get a bit more information out of it, I can include um, soccer and rugby into the equation. So if I just delete this uh, graph, and I go back, click back into my pivot table, and this time I'm going to put in sports. So I'm going to add in the element of sports. So drag, click sport, drag it um, into columns, and then what we end up seeing is our pivot table has changed to include rugby and soccer, and it's got the grand total there as well. Um, so yeah, now we've got two, we've got um, yeah, two different categories in there, um, or categorical data in there that counts um, the frequency that something happened within these weight ranges. So again, let's go back into uh, pivot chart 
I'm going to show you guys how you can overlay, overlay two histograms, okay? Overlay two histograms. That way um, you can actually see how they stack up. So right now, strictly speaking, this is what you would call a clustered bar chart. Yes, it has the frequency or it, it has the counts. Um, yes, it does have bins, so it's very similar to a histogram, but the uh, the columns aren't touching. And we're going to fix that, okay? We're going to fix that. So we do, um, as we normally do, format data series, um, and we change the gap width to 0%, okay? 0%. Um, the next thing that you want to do is series overlap. So you want the two series to overlap on top of each other. If we bang that up to 100%, then they overlap each other perfectly 100%. So it's as if you literally had two pieces of A4 paper with two different uh, histograms on it and you overlay them and press them on top of each other um, and, and they print it onto each other. Uh, like how you were when you were a kid and you, you'd put your handprint down and fold in half, make a butterfly or whatever. Um, so it's it's like that, okay? It's like that. Um, the next thing though is that it's not very readable. We don't really understand this. So we're gonna click onto it, have our format data series panel open. We're gonna click onto the paint bucket and what we want is not border, but we want fill um, and we want a solid fill, okay? I'm just gonna go with, okay, it's already changed it to blue for me. I'm gonna change the transparency as well to about maybe uh, 42%, so that's good enough. Um, and solid fill again, let's change it to blue again for me. I want it to be red, um, and if we change the transparency again, then now we can sort of read the two of them, and obviously we've got purple for where they've sort of overlapped. But now we can see the difference between the two data sets. We can see that um, the mode, the mode for soccer is 55 to 59, and then for uh, rugby, it's actually 70 to 74. So we can see how the two different data sets um, in histogram form weigh up against each other. They're actually quite that substantially different. Um, so that's something that we can talk about. Um, and obviously if the mode is um, in two different areas of the graph, then obviously the average and the median um, and it would, would be different as well. And you can also talk about ranges as well. So I'm going to show you guys um, very quickly. This is another thing as well. How can you quickly calculate um, the points of central location? Um, don't quote me on this terminology. I may have uh, made it up, but that's what I call it. Points of central location or points of centrality, whatever you want to call it. Um, now, the first thing that you need to do is you need to enable your data analysis tool pack. So you go file, options, and you go into add-ins and you want to make sure that you've got this active section here in act in active section um, and you want to make sure that data oh well analysis tool pack is uh is active okay in the active column if not then you need to go through and fix that okay um so what you want to do is go into data and on the ribbon at the top on the right hand side you'll see data analysis so we click onto data analysis we want descriptive statistics descriptive statistics um and then from here, what we want to do is we want to select our data. Right now, I can't actually do that because my uh, two categories aren't aren't separated. So I'm just going to fix that before I go any further. Um, so I'm going to go highlight my category, categorical data, sort it A to Z, expand the selection, yes. Um, now I've got nicely rugby and soccer separated, okay? Um, so now again, let's attempt that again. Descriptive st statistics, okay. Um, the input range, uh, it's already highlighted soccer for me, So, but I'll just start it over. So I'll delete that through. You just click this button here, um, select all of the soccer statistics. Okay, hit enter. Um, and for my output range, I don't know where that's going, but I'll just whack it here. Um, and you want to make sure that summary statistics is ticked, okay? Tick summary statistics, otherwise it won't work. Um, if you do that, you've got all of your uh, information there. So you've got mean, median, mode, uh, standard deviation. Um, the range could be important to you guys, which one has um, the greater range, um, minimum, maximum, etc. cetera. It's, it's, it's got basically all that you need. Um, and just change column to soccer as well, um, just for readability. Okay, so we'll do that again very quickly. So data analysis, top right hand side, descriptive statistics. Again, um, this time we want to, the input range will be our rugby. So we highlight rugby um, stats, output range. Uh, I'm just gonna click there, F17. Summary statistics are clicked, yes. And we just change this 
to rugby rugby um, just change your column so that you can actually read what's going on and there you go, you can do a direct comparison from here. So just having a look at this graph, um, I already know that the mode, or at least the peak points, are different. Um, I almost wanted to say that... I can't really talk about skewness. Um, I wanted to say that skewness for, uh, for, for soccer players was left-hand side, and then the skewness for... Um, Rugby plays with the right hand side, but that would be wrong. They look pretty much in dead in the center, so it would be pretty wrong for me to say that. Um, but anyway, just having a look at um, okay range, we can talk about range. Um, the range, the weight range for rugby players is thirty four, so that's greater than soccer players. So we can say that soccer players are a lot more consistent when it comes to their weights range. Maybe that has to do with their training. Maybe it has to do with their diets. Maybe it has to do with the culture surrounding the sport. I don't know. Um, but either way, it, it still says something, right? It says that they're more consistent. Um, when we look at the median, um, it's 57 to 71. Um, so basically the median and the mean, it points towards saying that on average rugby players weigh more than soccer players, okay? Um, so yeah, that's, that's how you can use uh, histograms. That's how you can use histograms with two different categories, and that's how you can overlay them. Um, I hope that this video helps. I hope that it actually does get you guys up and going um and that's yeah you guys um understand the difference between histogram you understand the difference how it differs from uh clustered bar charts and um ensuring that you know what you've got is actually called a histogram like don't say that you've got a histogram if it's not actually a histogram um but yeah this this is how i personally would present two histograms overlaid on top of each other that way i could talk about the uh the uh, points of central location and can and compare them against each other um, one thing that I didn't talk about um, just very quickly was the uh, borders just got to make sure that you have your border on there as well um, we did that in the previous uh, singular histogram where we did all the um, stuff so it shouldn't be too hard for you guys to figure out um, but yeah anyway that's uh, about me I'm gonna wrap that up um, thanks everyone for asking questions thanks everyone for their contribution on um, creating this this really isn't just from me um, looking up how to do things this really is a collective effort of everyone um, giving me tips hints and tricks and me just putting it together okay um, so yeah I hope this answers your questions um, anything else just feel free to ask me or ask your fellow students anyway thanks guys see you later on the y-axis the next thing that we need to understand is that we're going to have two different series here as well that's how we bring in the third